You know I love to combine car reviews with great landscape views and that's what we're going to do today here from Joshua Tree National Park and we have the exterior interior room here and we also have a different view, different landscape, different drive today from closer Los Angeles area with the Mulholland Drive. A lot of variety just for you here and we can enjoy together some great automotive shots and also some great landscape shots. So please join us here for the BMW X3 in this typical US spec trim as a 30i and everything of that in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! subscribe to us if you haven't done so far and thanks again for all long-term subscribers. Here in the front the BMW X3 in this new generation has this wider double kidney so pretty strong stance on the road but overall a rather conservative design I think we can say that. Then the headlamps they have a nice daytime running light and not for the base version but starting with the X line then you get LED as standard optional you can get those adaptive LED lights and you know they have a little bit more elaborate functions and here in the US spec by the way you always get those you know small yellow lights here at the side is also one of those small differences US spec and EU spec. 4.70 185 inches or 15 foot 4 is the length here of the BMW X3 and what a great panoramic view by the way this one here is about 27 centimeters longer than the BMW X1 because here you can also fit the six cylinder engines so you see this longer hood right there. Those ones are the 19 inch wheels, so it's somewhat in between. You can get smaller ones, but you can also get the bigger ones. Then here the crossover wheel arches, different trims of course available. Here then with a chrome contrast in the lower part. Mineral right is the color for today by the way. And again, a rather conservative layout here, but upright windows. So you still have a lot of light on the interior and even still a lot of space. So and we of course check out the interior very soon, how much space it is really we've got. Sometimes it's really hard to differentiate all those SUVs in the BMW lineup and also with other brands, of course. And here the X3 has rather, you know, big tail lamp still, whereas the X5 has more horizontally drawn and even more in this three-dimensional effect there, so you can differentiate them from the rear. Other than that, also rather a conservative layout here again, but again, the X3 is one of the most successful SUVs because it doesn't go in a very extreme direction. That's also very interesting, definitely. Real exhaust pipes here, right and left, and also this, you know, crossover cladding right there to stress somewhat of the off-road look. And you get the base suspension and also optional adaptive suspension. We have that here today, and the BMW adaptive suspensions are really top-notch, really top of the game. So for every car of their lineup, it's actually recommended to go for this adaptive suspension if it's not already standard, for example, like for the BMW X5. about engines, either 2 liter 4 cylinders or 3 liter 6 cylinder engines and we start here with the 2 liter 4 cylinder engine either as the 20i with 184 horsepower and then more relevant for the US would be the 30i here today also 252 horsepower 6.3 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour or 6 seconds to 60 miles an hour and then there's the M40i the 3 liter R6 or inline 6 cylinder 360 horsepower 4.8 seconds 
than to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. On the diesel side, that's not relevant for the VS, but just to mention also for our other guys, it's either the 2-liter 4-cylinder with 190 or 213 horsepower, or the 3-liter inline 6 diesel with 265 or 326 horsepower than in the M40D. This is the car key, slim and light, like that, close on the BMW logo and open on the top part. Or use the keyless entry function with putting your finger right here on those three lines. You can see in this case also with this package, the mirror flips in and out and put your hand on the inside to open it. And door closing sound. Mm. It's okay, but I heard more solid ones, so not, you know, not exciting. <laughs> yeah, let's leave it that. So, soft touch here at the top part of the doors, sensor tackle at the red, then you get a wood inlet right there. But you can, of course, get different styles. This one here, a brown style, also with a leatherette on the inside of the doors. Actually, quite huge door pockets. They fit also very well for bigger bottles. Then this one is a luxury line. You can also see that with the entry badge. And sadly, it means luxury line only with animal skin seats. <clears throat> Sorry about that. But... Um, you can also get Santa Tech seats in the US for the X3 in black or beige, for example. Then we are animal friendly and still got the slick surface you can wipe clean and it's also high grade. And in Europe, for example, you also get a fabric seat as base, so different choices available. Then the steering wheel, you can see here with the heated function as well, left side for cruise control and the right side would be to adjust the volume. And there you can already see something of those mix between digital and analog gauges. Soon more details to that, and when we get inside now, the cool thing about the X3 is mid-size SUV, at least for European tastes, and then you already have this upright seating position here, the real SUV feeling. Steering wheel can be adjusted manual like this, by the way. So up and down, also in and out. Nice shifting pedals with a good feel. So this automatic gearbox, then you can also manual control it, so to say. And if you compare it to the X1, the X1 rather compact style, crossover feeling, this one here already true SUV feeling. Good long-term comfort also, no lower back pain also for tall people, 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. Still some headroom we left, although we have the panoramic, panoramic roof installed, soon going to show that too. And well, if you compare it to the X5 then, thinking about that, yeah, of course you pay more money. Um, the X5 even bigger, sit even higher. Yes, it's a little bit more comfortable on a long, or the very long journeys. However, this one then, you can get also long in the city a little bit better because a little bit shorter of a vehicle. So yeah, it's a trade-off always. Well, nice BMW wing lights and then we go, yeah, there we go. <laughs> so with the panoramic roof and you can open this shade, this light there, and of course the whole thing, and it leaves a lot of light in here, and that's always a very nice feature, I always enjoy it, and it goes really all over the car. Interior overview, here also rather classic setup, even with a, a CD or DVD entry right there, volume knob, and then the climate unit, also pretty classic, and I really like that, to, to have that, to control everything while driving quite easily, so not everything has to go into a screen. But there we go, with the widescreen format, Nice GPS map as well, and you can also use white touch, or still with the lower control knob right there, the classic one, you can also use it for, for writing addresses or so, but that already works also with the voice input. Then we got the wooden inlet right there, and design element like this Hofmeister King design, which they also use on exterior cars, for example, and everything is soft touch here as well, so good build quality. This also has been massive change in this new generation still. Then the compact steering wheel, very well to control. Of course, more to the steering when we drive the car, and you can see how, you know, the um, both the digital instruments and also the screen somehow plays together. Everything is quite straightforward in, a car, in this car, and that I like, I like you know. X3 badge in the lower end, you can slide this one here open, then with an inductive charging pad for your phone, because you can have the wireless Apple CarPlay, no Android Auto for the BMW as yet, 
USB A charger in the front, then you got those adaptive cup holders. This shifting lever is quite high and quite big, but it somehow gives a good tactile feeling, so there also a classic way might not be a bad thing at all. You change the driving mode, sport and comfort, talking about more of that on the mobile Holland drive later on. And then there's this armrest, and when you, you know, very well attached when you slide it open, there's now a USB A charger with some storage for you, yeah, for the purse. There's a leatherette purse, by the way, and also for sunglasses and so on. So what do we mean by mix and analog of digital in this case? Well, those ones here, those aluminum rings, they are analog. This is the real thing. You can touch them, actually. And then everything else is a screen. And in this case, really, with the X1, for example, or X2, it's a little bit different. They are, you know, um, they are letters which are illuminated from the back. But this case, this is really a screen, not only in the middle. And here we go, like with the RPMs, for example. When I shut off the car and then also open door, the door, you see what I mean? There we go, and then you can see it's the screen. The head-up display, it's actually bigger than it appears here for the speed and allowed speed and also some GPS information. Really helpful option always that you can keep everything in the line of sight. So, infotainment system up close. I can control it with the lower control knob, as I said earlier. There you can also see already one of the very realistic MPG figures. Then the GPS, I really like the software, it's doing a great job here at the National Park at the moment, Park Boulevard, yeah, beautiful name, and it has a very good visualization, I like that. And by the way, for the voice, what you could, for example, do is go to the search and then speak something, use the voice button in Steam, but in this case, oh, there's also this, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, haptic control, or gesture control, you could speak it, but we're not connected to the server here because we have no web connection, but if you have a web connection connected to the server, it works with the natural voice input, but not in a way with the all new systems that you could say like, hey, BMW, and start a natural voice input. You have to do a little bit more for that. Then on the left side, you can also reach it with a, with a control knob. There's the CarPlay connection here, wireless, and you see the integration right here. This is the main menu, so it does not go all the way over the screen. And that's the way you always can go back to the BMW menu. As for the rear compartment, let's enter right there. Easy entry, isofix at the outside seats each. And well, it does exactly fit here for four tall adults. Still have some knee room left here in, in front and a little bit better than the predecessor. Then headroom wise, that also fits with one with a six or six with one. And this is here also the panoramic roof, which is closed at the moment. Showed you that a little bit earlier. Nice wood inlets also here, and it's actually quite cozy, comfortable, and upright, so you can also spend a lot of time there. Optional separate climate unit here for the middle part, 12 volt power supply. Then you can fold down those cup holders if you like, they're also a little bit adaptive. And last but not least, there's also a ski hatch available right here, so you can also load things through just in the middle. And you can flip those seats from here, so that's possible, but what you can also do is release them from the trunk. And there's another interesting thing available because there's another lever. Then you can adjust this angle here of the seat mesh. Go for the back for a little relaxing position or a little bit more upright like this. And recently received that question, what about those head restraints? So you can flip them up actually, and then they are full head restraints. So they are not that small actually. So that's of course better than also for like when you crashing or something. So this is a trick and they do that, that you have a better view to the rear from the driving through the mirror when they're like this, when you're not driving with someone in the back. Well, what about the trunk area? Electric tailgate right here. And we left it as a road trip trunk today so you can see how it's going on when everything is fully packed. Well, this top cover here, you have to raise it down a little bit so you have to be careful and that's it. And yeah, you can see how much stuff there is fitting in there. This is also special for the US spec here. If you want a replacement tire, then you have this additional lip. In the EU spec, it would be just all the way flat because there's usually not a replacement tire in there. So we got this additional step that it can actually can fit one. And um, there you can see, just put a lot of luggage in here. It does exactly fit for two people. Of course, in the X5, you would be a little bit more versatile than for that. And here I already fit one of the seats. And you can also release a seat bench from here, from the trunk. Then you can load through longer things.
So guys, I told you we're going somewhat special today and therefore we'll start our driving moderation here in the Georgia Tree National Park. And you also have some soft off-road situations here and of course, you know, I want to do that. And actually I deactivate the ESC now and also put to sport mode so we can get a little bit loose. But of course, you know, I'm not here, to, here, for, here, for, not here for racing. Um, but still then you can find out a little bit more about the off-road capabilities of, the, of this car. And here when I'm like, no. Like this year. <laughs> yeah, I just love that, you know. So I hope you also saw it on camera so um, there you could see this rear wheel bias of this all wheel drive. It's just working when you know have the ESC offense on and then sports mode, and then you could bring the rear of the car a little bit um, around this corner there. Really beautiful, and yeah, that, that's really cool. And it has a great traction, definitely. Of course, when you have those controls deactivated, you can, let's say, swim a little bit on this, you know, rock sandy ground right there, um, just a little bit. But this car also in soft over situation really gives you a very good neutral balance handling feeling. So you, um, you know, you always feel feel very safe. Of course, there are always laws of physics. This, by the way, this, you know, pretty hard ground sometimes, and there are those waves that form out when you know when the cars drive over them and over and over again, um, similar to braking bumps, um, especially when like very heavy cars or, or trucks um, run over those, then they, they are building those tracks. Um, experience those ones also on those um, desert roads quite, quite some time all over the world. So it's really fun to drive some soft off-road here. Very, very cool. Well, there's another junction right there. So you can even decide, you know, where, just, just where you want to go, you know. So when I'm driving off-road, of course, I mean, some cars have those off-road modes which draw back the stability controls. Um, some others then, oh, we'll also go to the birds here. Uh, some others can also deactivate the ESC completely with button here. You have like an ESC on, then you have a traction mode that draws back it a little bit and then you can get it actually off because but I'm not actually sure it's, it's like really really off that's always the question um, it depends also on the vehicle if it's like 100% or if there's still something left so to say but definitely a lot of fun here in those um, soft off-road situations as well and of course when you are on the road and probably also when you're normal doing off-road best is always to leave the ESC on just for the maximum of safety. What I want to also show you is this all-wheel drive again when we do an acceleration from a standstill, just how much power I can put on the ground even when there's loose ground and here. That was like 0 to 30 miles an hour and just very quickly and there was no traction loss whatsoever, although everything ESC and so everything was deactivated, and I'm even in the sports mode, so this is really good how the you know, power is is being distributed to front and rear axle. So, oh yeah, a little bit leaning corner, a lot of fun here definitely, and this also stresses again one of my points about the X3. It's one of those midsize SUVs which gives you the most driving fun, and indeed. It's a little bit smaller and more agile than an X5. That would be one advantage if you think about comparing this one here to some bigger models. And now before we head back to LA, some road driving here from the National Park, which is also pretty cool. The tarmac here, by the way, is quite rough. Therefore, don't wonder if it sounds a little bit louder than it would usually do. Um, but the noise insulation in general is really cool with this kind. I really wanted to give you this scenic look here when driving. This is really amazing. You can also set the cruise control here on the left side of the steering wheel. Now at the moment to 35 miles an hour. And then there's also this um, assisted mode where also, you know, the the steering is being overtaken, but that's mainly thought for the motorway, so it doesn't work here at the moment. Um, and also then, usually at, at, at higher speeds, and you can see like a green steering wheel in the head-up display when it's working. Now we can actually also put it higher to 45 miles an hour. Again, it stays really silent here, good noise insulation, and it 
gives you a very calm and collected driving feeling. Wow, what a scenic look here. This is really cool. A natural steering feeling as well. There's also no dead area or, or something. And we can also, you know, we have a straight road, I'll come to a stop and then I can show you something of the acceleration. At the moment we're going downhill, it would be you know, a little bit biased there for sure. The adaptive cruise control is working very well. It has it on the highways also earlier. So it really keeps the distance to the cars in a, in a very good way. And the adaptive suspension is doing a great job. So when you go into sports mode, feel it stiffer, feel the bumps in the road and so on. And comfort really evens it out, makes it smooth. And you have the choice then if you have this optional adaptive suspension. We just really cool thing again optional for the X3 and would be standard for the X5 so now well, we're still going downhill but it's really good that we're going downhill to see a little bit more of this panoramic view um, it's really cold outside still so um, you can for example also use the heated steering wheel it's one of my favorite functions so if you think about an option and you also live in the climate where it's cold from time to time then this would be something I would definitely go for. Here, when I'm going some slalom, right there, you can see how, again, calm and collected this car remains and a very precise feeling also in the handling. And it's really a lot of fun. So you have this more comfortable SUV driving, but you can still have a car that gives you somewhat a sporty feeling and that gives you still driving fun. And that's, I think, um, yeah, one, of, one of the main characteristics or main reasons to go for for this car by the way in this middle screen and at the moment I yeah, again this um, gesture control when you have it, uh, that activated so there's this X drive status so you can see you know, how much degree angles we are leaning and also in which direction we're going at the moment we're going northeast so I mean when you don't need a GPS at the moment that's also an interesting thing always to look at the engine sound is really drawn back, it's very well insulated from the cabin, especially if you keep it at the low RPMs, so then you hardly hear anything from it indeed. Yeah, also check out how much I have to steer when I'm in those corners. It's not too much, maybe it could be a little bit more progressive or something, but definitely all good. So it gets a little bit more straight. Also, speed limit is being reduced because of those dips here. Cover also, also want to respect it. Now we have a change in tarmac actually. So this is on the one hand smoother, this, uh, but then again, you know, you have uh, those splits in between. I think you can very well hear that on camera. So now I just want to go to the sports mode. Because the, you know, it's a little bit more straight this road and then we can also show you something of the acceleration. There's no one behind us. Just like a 0 to 35 miles an hour and you can see how fast the speed is being picked up. Plop, that's already it. That was already 40 so of course reducing the speed immediately. So you can see you don't lack any power from this two liter four cylinder engine so that wouldn't be the reason to go for the six cylinder the six cylinder just feels a little bit more refined you can drive it at lower rpms and it also sounds a little bit better and yeah fuel economy won't be a big difference actually because you're turning those rpms a little bit higher than in the smaller engines but again lower and lower entry price of course for the four cylinders that would be you know one of the the main reasons to go for that one so I really hope you're enjoying this beautiful panoramic view. Wow, I mean, how far you can, you can just see right there through those plain areas down there and those beautiful Joshua trees right there. Wow, stunning view. And um, if you get a chance to come here at some point, you, you should definitely do that in person. And if you can't or if you, you know, don't have time or if your travels are too long for you, then at least you could enjoy driving the car here in the park together with us today and now to give even more variety for the day let's head back to LA wow 
welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge today from the Mulholland Drive in the Hollywood Hills. So yeah, very beautiful, really scenic. And did you know there was this guy called William Mulholland and was promoting this idea to have a scenic route in the mountains here to make it accessible and they start building that in the 1920s. So very interesting story and today we have this very very scenic route and yeah you know everyone knows it. Yeah there are some stop uh, uh, stop signs here as well but most of the time you can just go through and it really goes like all the way uh, bend, in bending corners and that's of course the best thing then to test a German vehicle here in the US. Because, you know, especially our, our friends in the US, you will know that uh, when you are driving in the cities in the US, then it's really quite often that you have, you know, maybe sometimes a left or right turn, but most of the time you just go straight, you know, you go straight and straight and once more straight. And here, of course, it's fun because you can just have a little bit more corners. So the X3 um, here with the X drive today, so the 30i, that means we have the 2 liter 4 cylinder. That is also in the US at least available without X drive, but here the version with all wheel drive, still with the rear wheel bias. 252 horsepower and 6.3 seconds is the acceleration here to 100 kilometers an hour, or 6 seconds to 60 miles per hour. And that's definitely quite decent, of course, not as fast as those three liter inline six cylinders, but still very decent and you won't miss any power at all, definitely not. And I mean, that speed limit of 30 um, here sometimes also goes lo lower to 15, because you know, when people would be racing here all the time, yeah, that wouldn't be so good. <laughs> But the thing is, no matter if you go slow or if you go a little bit faster, this car has an excellent noise insulation. So it's really, really silent in here. That's one of the very good things. And I also promised you that I draw some comparisons to the other BMW X models because we've been, you know, we've been driving all of them definitely. And the X1 rather feels like a crossover still, like a compact crossover. The X3 here already feels in driving like a true SUV and that's also what, what I prefer when I go for this SUV building style. There is of course still a difference to the X5 as well. So you are a little bit you know, higher than, car is a little bit bigger and so on. Doesn't make big difference in comfort. This one here is already very comfortable, you know, with this upright seating position and this SUV feeling. But yeah, you have to say the X5 is a little bit more comfortable. The question is always how much money you want to spend and also how much space you have around you, you know, and especially in narrower European roads or so, the, X3, the X3 can be a little bit more handy instead of having the X5, which is maybe then too big for some occasions. But then again, if you have a lot of space and you don't mind spending the extra money, the X5 will give you also a little bit more comfort, especially for tall people. So if you um, not oh, there's a squirrel running around the the energy line. Be safe, fellow. <laughs> really funny. So um, so when you're a little bit taller, then it makes more difference than when you're a little bit smaller. So uh, yeah, sometimes tall people then have to spend more money on cars actually. <laughs> really funny. So now we can go at least uh, 30 miles per hour. Um, and really good that we have a natural steering feeling. That's also what BMW does best in most models. Not in all. That's what I have been criticizing with the all new BMW 3 Series. That the core brand car is the one with the least, you know, good steering feeling. Which is pretty weird, isn't it? But here, the X models actually have a very good steering feeling, so mm, it's not super progressive. Yeah, they make those, you know, open air tours here. Oh, the Lexus LC. Of course, you also see some very fancy cars here around those neighborhoods as well. So the steering, it doesn't have any dead area. It's not too, no, not too stiff. It's actually pretty light overall, but it gives you still a, a good feeling, you know, of, of what you can do and, and 
what what you can. So you always have like a really scenic overviews. Then um, here to the right, for example, is like the, the 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 studio area where we have the Hollywood Studios, you know, like Warner Brothers and um, Universal Studios and so on. And on the left side at the moment, there would then be like direction to downtown and Santa Monica and so on. And you always go around this peak here. Yeah, so Holger can take a look. A look here as a co-driver at the moment. And yes, we always say co-driver at Autogefühl. I won't say like you know passenger because I think the passenger seat you know is always somewhat involved in driving. Yeah, sometimes in an annoying way. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. And sometimes in a less annoying way. Sometimes also in a very attractive way. That counts for both male and female, depending on you know. <laughs> so back to our driving here, and this is also you know where, where the fun really starts. You can, um, yeah. Sometimes they, they stop you with the tools, and the guys guys like oh, and then like you know see the uh, the house on the mountain top there on the crest. Like uh, there's you know this Hollywood star living there, and the other the Hollywood star has got that house and so on. And so yeah, also very nice to make one of those tours, definitely, especially if there's. You know, done by someone who really knows their sh uh, stuff. <laughs> so and here now we can also take the, this Beamer, how we say in the US, then a little bit more to where it really belongs. And it's really fun, you know? So that's also where the X3 has some advantage if you compare it to the X5. It is a little bit more compact, so to say. Um, for us in Europe, it's mid-size SUV, and the X5 would be full-size in the US. Uh, yeah, we think then a little bit differently about that. Um, but here you feel that you have less weight than in the X5, and so it's at some point also a little bit more fun to drive. That would be the big advantage. If you're thinking about a six hour ride on the freeway, then the X5 will do a better job because you can relax a little bit more and so on. We also have those horsepower gauges, oh, Tesla Model 3 in white, same color as we have here today. Horsepower gauges here also in the middle part. I'm not sure if they're that useful. Yeah, we can we can argue about that, but I think it's always you know maybe nice to look at, especially in for co-drivers who are checking like oh are the horsepower figures right? <laughs> yeah, that's really that's really nice. So um, assistance systems, by the way, um, of course this is rather something for the free rear. Oh, wow, it's an old Mercedes SL. Beautiful. So also nice vintage cars. I mean, with this weather here, you see so many vintage Mercedes SL, which are like in perfect shape because they never got like you know any rain or rust and something. That's of course now definitely really really cool. So one of the very very um, you know very few traffic lights and um, just to check, I think we just go straight, right? So straight is like where we continue. Yeah. So you, you can make you know, like um, you know too many mistakes about that. So it's actually relatively easy to do. Uh, Fort Mustang, by the way, is also a good thing. You can um, maybe just see, like hire at the airport or so, and then um, you know just start driving. There's also like some rental services in downtown, and um, yeah, of course all over the place. So a lot of people take the Mustang convertible um, six cylinders usually here um, because they're the cheapest and. Then you can just uh, at a pretty reasonable um, rental rate and take that one here up the Mulholland Drive. So um, did that last time as well. Um, it was a lot, a lot of fun. Today in the X3, of course. I mean, it's not the warmest weather conditions today outside, but you know, still very decent. So um, um, yeah, really nice and also with the sunshine and it's such a nice and scenic road here and so many things to see, so many things to enjoy and. We actually were starting at the very beginning point near um, Griffith Park, and there's this um, overview over the Hollywood Bowl, fam uh, a really, really famous location, like for about 17,000 people, 18,000 people for open air concerts, and then it really goes all the way from from east to west, or then you know other way around if you start at the at the other side. Really, a lot of more Tesla Model Three is going on here. Uh, this one here, oh, <laughs> well then, just. Cross. I had everything in the line of sight in the head-up display, by the way, so that's really helpful. And the BMW head-up displays, although in the X3 you don't have like the most elaborate head-up display, like the bigger ones in the X5, still they're very crisp and sharp, so you can see that very well. And that's where they are somehow industry-leading. Uh, whereas some of the other head-up displays, they are also helpful. But then you see, you know, 
Mm, oh, maybe. Oh, there's next five, you know, that's a, the bigger brother coming right there. It's pretty impressive also, you know, with like the, the, the front grille and this chrome that looks really fancy. Mm, so here you see, you know, that's like that when you do like a sighting test, you know, at the <laughs> At the doctors or something, and this is like you know the, the most sharp thing you can see. This is how BMW does the head-up displays, and that's also you know why I prefer their head-up displays um, actually. So the X3 for me is a good compromise between not going too big, still have some driving fun with an SUV, but yet again not going too small, and maybe lack comfort, especially if you're a little bit taller or something, and. Well, at the moment we're dropping down in the MPGs a little bit because you know we have a lot of you know, uphill and stuff and, and, and turning roads and it's also a nice overview. I um, like to go the here as, here as well, but actually a little bit clogged at the moment. Um, so, but what you can realistically score is about like eight to nine liters on 100 kilometers with this engine, and yeah, somewhat um, 26 MPG US, 31 MPG UK that can get a little bit better when you're just on the freeway and having cruise control set and it will get a little bit worse when we you know, like do stuff like this so it really depends on the situation yeah fuel economy could be a little bit better indeed and it will not actually be worse if you go for the three liter six cylinder so um here again is showing that downsizing and not yeah like the, the um, like the house over there you know like when they like those are like um I think last time it was like this guy and saying like can't really remember who it was but like a lot of um very very famous people living there now and like watching down on their studios like oh I was but they're, they're actually less active film studios nowadays in the um you know in, in this area so some of those studio tours are more like scene park to tour tours than seeing actual film production so you have to um you know be sure what you want to see there when when, when you go there. So still having a lot of fun in those corners and of course I want to tell you more about driving modes because we also have the adaptive suspension in here and that's a pretty cool thing, BMW really knows their business there. <laughs> so they're very good compromise between sportiness and comfort and when you leave it all in the comfort mode then it's a little bit softer and when you go to the sports mode then you immediately feel that it gets I mean, for, for those, I mean, see, like a little bit rough. There are also like those, you know, markers on the road. When you go over them, then you feel more of that. Um, like now, bum, 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 bum. And you feel that in the, in the sport suspension mode. Of course, you have a little bit more feedback then from the car. And it's somewhat and more fun when the road is all even. But usually I would just recommend the comfort mode because that one has also really a nice com compromise, you know, between sportiness and comfort. The sports mode then, again, is really something if the road is really even. You've maybe already seen that the gauges change to a red background and have a bigger speed display. That's also pretty nice. So the everything adapts to that mode. And also the gears are turned up higher that they have just a little bit more um, RPMs right there. Um, so that's how we, can, how we can use those driving modes then. So we have another stop sign, we can continue further. And the good thing is here, you know, you have really enough power with this, with this force and engine, so that's not the thing why you need to go for the six cylinder. Again, fuel economy won't make, um, it's not that people would let you leave you in here. So <laughs> I mentioned that earlier, uh, like I noticed that earlier as well. Um, why would you go for the three liter six cylinder? It sounds a little bit better. Again, the fuel economy is not necessarily worse than with this one. It's of course also a matter of base price, you know, this one here can be bought a little bit cheaper. So that would be the main advantage it just in the in the buying price, definitely. Power wise, you of course a little bit like, you know, second, a second and a half faster than um, maximum, but um, nice blue color for the Stelvio. But then again, you know, this one is definitely fast enough. And if you want to boost the RPMs a little bit higher, then you can always use those shifting pedals, for example and cruise control here on the left side and I tested earlier on the freeway it really works very flawlessly so the distance to the car in front of you is being kept and one of the other very important assistance systems is definitely also the blind spot monitor here in the side mirrors where you know we have this triangle that is flashing 
The only thing always when I'm driving US spec vehicles that they have those mirrors on the driver's side which are, you know, somewhat, they feel like being zoomed in to comparison to what we have as mirrors in Europe. Um, in our mirrors, we have a little bit better overview of, of what's coming ahead. Here, it's again, you know, more like you'd think it would be magnified in comparison to the other ones. So I prefer the ones we have in Europe, but maybe it's also just a matter of preference. Even more important that you have the blind spot monitor. That's really helpful. You should always go for that. Like base autonomous emergency brake is standard equipment here, yes. Rear view camera is also standard, at least just in US, because it's mandatory, by, uh, meanwhile, by law. But then most of the other stuff, as we know from the premium manufacturers, most of the stuff you have to buy extra that can be a little bit annoying. And then when you look at the prices, I'm like, wow, what list price I am, I am, am I on now? So that guy says, like, we should go faster or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, A5 now also in white. Like a lot of white cars here as well. The A5 also one of those, you know, very beautiful mid-size fastbacks. Um, when it's like an A5 sportback, of course, there's also the coupe and the, and the convertible then. Yeah, speaking about convertibles, so there are basically three convertible markets um, on in the, in the world. It's like Germany, UK, and California. <laughs> that's what you know. That's what you say. On this 911 here, why is the hood hood closed? So should open the hood, right? If you have a convertible. <laughs> yeah. So you see, there are some um, traffic lights here. Yes, and now this like one of the first spots where I have to turn left. Actually, so I. Let's see if I can squeeze in here somehow. If that guy would drive a little bit more forward, a lot of Lexus driving here as well. So we, we hardly see them um, in Germany, and that's also very good for me. Like you know, when you're driving here the U.S. roads, that's for me always very very helpful to see. You know, we have so many fans from the U.S. and then actually know you know what's important for you. You have some different driving situations, different situations on the road. And then you always know, like, you know, what's the, what's the stronger emphasis when driving in Europe and when driving in the US. And then they can also adapt my comments and also, like, the, the ratings to that um, for, for, for those individual cars. That's, that's, you know, pretty good to know. So I have to wait here just a little bit. So let's accelerate. That was already 33, <laughs> and I was like not pushing it all the way through. So, like pretty much, but not all the way. But you see, you definitely have enough power, and yeah, this um, little bit longer waiting period, we edited that, that out <laughs> for you. That's a little bit more exciting just for you. So, in really nice neighborhoods here also, and I mean, look at all the flowers, you no know, banana palm trees, and this were also really cool to have this vegetation here. So. Somehow seems that everything grows. Yeah, but you have to know there's sometimes also water so shortage, so a lot of those um, plants need regular water. That is sometimes a very big problem here. So it was very funny, like when we came here for the motor show, like every November, that um, some of you guys from LA wrote me, Oh, Thomas, thank you so much for bringing some rain from Germany over. <laughs> we really needed that because of the recent drought. And this was actually the first time I saw like flooded streets in downtown LA. I also had like a short Instagram clip of that. That was pretty amazing. So, um, and there was even hail, you know, you could see that from the hotel, it was actually hail coming down. So here again, in the sport mode, the car is indeed more responsive. So um, in Germany, we say, hängt stärker am Gas. What, what would be direct, direct translation like? hangs closer to the throttle. You know what that means, probably, you know? So better throttle input. It's usually a gear down already, so you have direct response then from the car. Suspension is stiffer, and yeah, I mean, the road is not the best here as for the smoothness, so indeed, it does cost you some comfort, definitely. So, um, oh, there's like another scenic overview, pretty amazing. Um, so usually I would then stick back to the comfort mode. The car's also shifting up a little bit better than or earlier. And then 
you can even save some of you in the Eco Pro mode. You know BMW has been using like the mild hybrid systems that some energy is being recuperated into the normal car battery for quite some time, even before we started talking majorly about new MHEF systems. And this is also being done here in the Eco Pro mode, a little bit more, throttle is being reduced. I also like that the instruments change to a blue style. So you have then this blue style instead of the red style when you have uh, you know this sports racing mode. I think that's something that also spices up your driving life just, just a little bit. So and um, let me just, because we're not on the freeway at the moment, I really want to have something scenic for you today and a lot of you know turns and so on. It's really beautiful. So when we were on the freeway, again, really silent, even like at 60, 70 miles per hour, so 100, 120 kilometers an hour. It's really great noise insulation in this car, and again, just a silent and cozy ride. So it's also a good motorway vehicle, and again, also with the assistance systems, if there's traffic coming ahead, you just set the adaptive cruise control here, and then you can relax just a little bit more. So. Very interesting drive once again with the BMW X3. The X4, by the way, is of course the same platform. It is a little bit different. It has a somewhat a sportier emphasis. So same as with X5 and X6. And of course, the X7 then even bigger than, than the X5. We taught you um, also more about that in the latest, latest X7 review. But definitely here. The X3 is, you know, so far the most successful SUV, um, or one of the most successful SUVs, because it has all been built a lot of times and it's also not too expensive. The X1 is catching up majorly because it's even better in price, and for a lot of people, it's just a better price performance ratio. I can understand that, but still, the X3, you know, very good compromise, especially if you have some, you know, parking problems, can go for the X5 or don't want to afford the X5 and. Both X5, we've been driving that already, and the X3 also now available as PHEV. And this could be a good alternative also just for, you know, just to this one, especially if you can recharge frequently. And yeah, it was really interesting, you know, about X3 PHEV and uh, did some configuration. And yeah, in Germany, I ended up like with a full spec one, 70,000. Wow, that hurts. Of course, and then you get some governmental benefits and so on. So, like taxation-wise, it can be better than again, but still, yeah. The prices are already quite high. Then again, it's nothing different with, for example, the Mercedes GLC, which would be another competitor. We just said a little bit more again on this rather soft ride, especially if you go for the air suspension with that one. Of course, if you go for the sport models there, like you know, 63 we've been driving the GLC facelift for example, then they also, they also can be very sporty. Um, but the general um, emphasis is a little bit different, whereas BMW always goes from the base models in a little sporty direction. So, I mean, this road goes on quite a while still. And, um, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll be driving that further. It's really very, very, very beautiful. I'm not sure if you want to tune in, um, like, you know, for half an hour more or something. Um, I think you could, you know, glimpse a little bit here of the LA lifestyle and could enjoy this test drive here with me together. And I mean, if you say like, yeah, Thomas, you know, why don't you drive some more roads like those and just, you know, share this experience with us. So um, would be also interested in, in your feedback on that. Um, always very welcome. And of course, thank you so much again to all our long-term fans who have been supporting us all the time and always are really going um, you know, full length on all those reviews. That really means a lot to me. So, yeah, it was a great driving part here today, together with you guys. Great that you're just, you know, on your sofa, on your on the desk, on, um, behind your desk, or whatever, or wherever you. Some people are like they were, they are watching Arduk Fu and being under the shower. I mean, why not? Why not? So, watch Arduk Fu wherever and whenever you want. <laughs> And now to the conclusion for today with the BMW X3 S30i. 
X Drive and great landscape here today. So you know, really enjoyed that. I hope you did that as well. And actually, it's twice great landscape and you know something very very different. So the X3 sits very well between you know the X1 and also the X5. And of course, always those coupe counterparts they also have. And it's really when the X5 is too big for you, but you still want a little bit more comfort. Always this upright SUV driving position in comparison to the X1. Also, the Mercedes GLC would be a high competitor, and also the Audi Q5. This one here, the Q3, the one with the most driving fun, natural steering feeling, and so on. That's what I really like about this car, and it's also comfortable on longer journeys already, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, still high in the price. Yeah, I think we also have to live with that. On the interior, quite conservative, but they really stepped up the game with this new generation. Not with the latest voice control management they have there, but already, you know, you can do something of that. And the styling here with a bigger double kidney, already quite strong. But everything, you know, sits a little bit in the middle, you know, doesn't want to scream out too much. So, has also some kind of understatement, this vehicle. Adaptive suspension is also one of the best things you can get for this car and really offers a great compromise of sportiness and comfort with this one. So, what do you think? Would you go for a four-cylinder or a six-cylinder? Yeah, I mean, the four-cylinder is enough. The six-cylinder, however, would offer you a little bit more refinement, a little bit more fun as well, but it's not necessarily higher in the fuel consumption. So, it's more about than the entry price. Now, join us in the comments about this vehicle and also about the concept of this, you know, landscape beauty shot episode for today. See you next time.